Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Today I want to share with you the process of actually taking some of these things that we've been making and putting them together in an easy book. So with this book I've got three different pieces. The last thing, or one of the last things we made was the belly band. We also made a matchbook. But I'm going to take that and put it into just a really easy to make book. So what I did initially was I took a file folder and I did the same exact method of making a master board where I collaged on here just a really a crazy quilt. Of so I'll put the link to the master board of how to make it uh, right up above so you can see it. Go back there and see how do you make it. You're going to make it just on a file folder though but you don't need the full length. I took the file folder and I just uh, measured it up to make it so that it would fit a half sheet of paper. So here's a normal 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, right? So if you were folding that in half and putting it in, it would just fit nicely inside of there. So let me tell you the measurements of what I have it cut and folded at. I believe this is 8 and 3 quarters. I have it just a little bit over that. So I have it so they have just about a, a quarter of an inch in between, you know, at the on e either side of this. You can make it smaller though. Um, it just depends on your preferences, like if you're going to, at, at the top of your book, have any little things sticking out or not. So how far I went in on folding the edge, I think I probably left also about a um, half, well, I did a half inch. So, so up to here is six inches. Your paper, when it's closed, is five and a half inches. I like having tabs and things on the end of my paper, so I wanted to make sure that I had space that I could put tabs but in that it won't go really beyond the edge of my books. So you can make your shorter if you're not putting tabs in there for example but I did mine at six inches and folded it in. What I need to do now I need to put paper, place some papers on the inside there and then after that I'm gonna glue down these edges. So let's go ahead and do that. So decide which area you want to be the front of your book and which area you want to be the back. I can do either way, but because I have some of these texts going in a certain direction, I'm going to use that as an indicator of which way I'm going to have mine going. So I'm going to have my front being on this side, and I can put my paper in. I'm going to put it with the music going all the way to this edge. So on this side I went clear to the edge, on this side I cut off a little bit. Either way is fine, there's no right or no wrong way. So what I want to do on this back side is just make sure I don't have any wet glue seeping out because I want to go ahead and cut along the edge. I left it longer like that just to make sure it went to the edge. Sometimes you know how you cut it too short, and if you do cut it a little short it's not the end of the world. You can cover it with other paper or you can use some ink on it. Ink it up. So, speaking of ink it up, I think I'll do that next. I'll take ink and I'll ink my edges. I don't have to ink these edges since they're going to be covered up like that, but I would like to put some ink on this middle section. Now, you won't really see the very middle part because that's where my um, signature is going to be sewn into and it'll kind of cover that up. I do see I need just a touch of glue right here. You want to make sure all your stuff is glued down. If you have something that's kind of not, you just go in there, give it a little dab. So at this point too, 
I want to go around and I'm going to do the distressing on my cover. So I got it on both flaps. Now I'm going to do the creasing for when the flaps closed. And do that on both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and distress all the way around my cover on both sides. So with my cover, I want to kind of mute it down just a little bit to give it a little softer overall flow. So what I'm going to do, you can either take um, paint or you can take some um, get gesso. I have paint right here, so that's what I'm going to take and use. So I got this new little tray here. Got it just at the dollar store, but I thought, oh, this would be nice to to use. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to give it a go. Of course, my paint has to come out in order for that to happen. That's some thick paint I got here. So I'm just going to take, um, this is a card from one of my hotels. I'm just going to start placing it on here. I just like the look that it, that it brings to the paper. Kind of unifies them a little bit more, and then seeing some, um, whoops, my tape, seeing some kind of distressed looks out of it too. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. Now you don't have to do this step with the paint and all. Um, I just wanted to do a little bit more. To my cover. Not necessary at all. You could use your wonderful master board with your great... Uh, it, to me it reminds me of a crazy quilt. Um, you could do that and just call it good. Or if you want to do this, you can do this. Either way, up to you. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? See, I want a real... I want that distressed look in those areas where I don't want it. Just a solid color. If you want a solid color, Go ahead and take your paintbrush. You can do that. Not the look I'm going for, though. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this down. So what I'd also like to do is do some stamping on here with the green um, nature color. So if you can see on here, what I did, I used I used green because I wanted it to have a, a nature natural type feel. I want to do some stamping and some inking on the front to bring that kind of look in. Don't need that anymore. That's the ink that I mostly used. I used the forest. Forest moss it's called. So here's some stamps that I have I'm going to try using. I don't want it to be a really big solid block. I just want to bring some of those colors in. I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. Yeah. Just kind of gives it more of that outdoorsy, woodsy feel. Can you see that side compared to just the normal side? Now this size looks wonderful. It just all really depends on what you're making and what you're doing. So I, I'm kind of swiping it across my paper and it's also making wonderful smudges. I like that book for this particular, or that book. I like that look for this particular book that I'm doing. So if you want something like that, just go ahead and do that. 
I like it. All right, let's move on. Now for this book in particular, I have three pieces that I wanted to use. I wanted to use this page, this full page, this belly band, and here is a tag that I made. So for the paper, I have a variety that I've selected. This is just a scrap that I found and I thought that would be great. I have an envelope in here. This is a um, ledger type page. So I'm going to make a, a, a flip out of that one. So that's one page, two, three, four. I have four pieces of coffee dyed paper in here. So on this page, these are going to go underneath after I turn that into a band. I like the look of that. It still has a natural look, but it kind of goes with the rest of this. When you turn the page here, for the first page, that's where I wanted to put this bold one. So all I have to do is glue this one down. This page is all ready to go and I can do embellishments. I'll be stamping and doing stenciling and things on that page. And this page I have this wonderful vintage graph paper. Next page I have some music and I'll be doing other things on these. In the middle here, I'm going to put a belly band on that side. Another music. Getting here, here's a um, just an embossed card. I'm going to use something like that there. And then on the last page here, I'm going to use this other, um, this, the tag. So I've got lots of fun things going on on my pages. Um, and I've used three of my elements. I don't have to use a ton of elements. It just depends on all what all you want the book to be. This is how I want the book to be. I want it to be able to be written on, but yet carry the look throughout the book. So let's see what I need to do next. Knowing that this is how it's going to be, I think I want to do some sewing along the edge and then doing some sewing on these pages and then come back and start doing the, um, the stitching, stitching the book together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we will meet up again.